All right, let's do some training. Let's talk some tech. We're going to look at cloud companies with the thought ahead of us for Salesforce 2 being a pretty important one. And joining us, Derek Wood, Senior Analyst covering Enterprise Software at TD Cowan. Tom's here in studio with me looking at the options in these stocks. Uh, Derek, let's uh, talk uh, some work day first here. Is, uh, it seemed like the market kind of changed its mind overnight. First response was kind of negative, and then uh, a pretty nice rally here this morning. What do you see is uh, attributable to that? Yeah, I mean, the initial reaction, you're right, the stock was down a decent amount. And the reason being, it was an inline quarter, it was an inline guide. Uh, I think there was some expectation for upside. Uh, but on the call, they came out and they talked about some adjustments to their medium-term uh, growth forecast. Uh, they had been forecasting 17 to 19% growth. They dropped that down to 15% over the next couple of years. But they did say they're going to focus a lot more on margin expansion. And previously, their calendar 26 target was um, was 25% operating margin. Now it's 30%. Wow. So they're talking about 500 bips of margin expansion over the next two years. They, they pulled the margin lever. And I think investors wanted them to do that. Uh, we know the macro is tough out there. It's out of their control on pressure on growth rates. But what is in their control is being able to be more efficient with costs, pull the margin lever. Uh, and we knew that they had that capability, that, that they hadn't really focused a lot on, on cost efficiencies historically. And they had room to do that without impairing growth too much. So now the reaction is, stock up 13, 14% today. Pulling the margin lever, uh, huge point there because it seemed like they were a little late where like the year of efficiency was kind of like a 2023 thing with all these cloud companies getting punished by the market, forcing them to focus on the profit. Does that put like uh, old highs possibly in contention again? I mean, where could Workday go from here if they do take a more kind of hard line approach to profits? Yeah, I mean, I, we, we've kept our $290 price target. Uh, we want to hear a little bit more around what they're going to say and target on the cash flow side. They're having an analyst day and their annual conference in, uh, in a few weeks in September. So that's going to give us a chance to better understand what their uh, cash flow forecasts are. Our, our initial kind of back of the envelope gets us to about $3.3 billion in um in, in calendar 26 uh, free cash flow and the stock's trading um i think maybe 18 19 times that right now so if you look out to um to calendar 26 it's a it's a pretty attractive valuation okay uh and uh the overall kind of uh economic outlook to your point shouldn't matter as much if they're focused on margin seems like a lot of margin expansion uh, is kind of being the key there. I like that point. Uh, for Salesforce, when we get them uh, to report next week, last time there's a big gap down, big sell-off. I mean, can they pull any margin levers, or is there too much still under the hood there for them to, to juggle? Well, they, like you said, they did pull the margin lever uh, last year. Right, that was last year. the thing. stock worked great, yeah. and I think they had 800 bips of margin expansion. And that's why I think a lot of investors were, you know, calling on Workday. Why don't you do that? Because it worked out quite well for uh, for the stock, and and uh, now you see that. Now for Salesforce, I think they've already done that, uh, so uh, not a whole lot more left they can do. So now we're really just kind of left with what's the, the navigation on the top line. And the read through from Workday is that it's tough out there. They're seeing longer sales cycles, less seed expansion at renewal. And uh, they think this is going to be the new normal. And this is why they dropped their growth, uh, medium term growth outlook by a few points. And um, that is a little bit of a cautious read through for Salesforce, who's also a seat based licensing model and has growth based on seat count. Um, and uh, so I think it's a little cautious read for top line. Uh, we're expecting an inline number with our 10% backlog growth um, and total revenue growth for Salesforce, I think is going to drop below um, digits for the first time ever. We're mm. modeling 8% cost of currency growth. And, uh, you know, that puts it into, you know, single digit growth plan, which um, historically has just been a big overhang on valuations and software. And uh, so we're a little less in, in, in enthusiastic on, on that name. 
Okay. Uh, $290 price target. So that'd be nice from here, but still below the high to the point kind of uh, of uh, maybe the limited potential when their growth starts to slip. Be interesting to see how the market's going to treat them uh, with uh, single digit sales growth. Uh, you know, the boom time's over, but maybe, you know, we're on our path towards kind of a more stable, who knows, like dividend producing uh, stock long term, possibly. Uh, thanks, Derek. Good stuff. Appreciate that. Uh, good analysis. Thank you. And a good preview for Salesforce. Tom, you got to trade. Let's talk some CRM here. Up yeah. two and a quarter percent. I think it's really like in these workday earnings. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, overshadowed because they report the same day that NVIDIA does next week. So it's probably good for them, to be it, honest. It probably is. Yeah. Uh, but the, the moves we've seen, you mentioned workday, the move to the upside. You saw Snowflake Crater. So a lot of these software stocks and, and you know, uh, AI related stocks and cloud stocks are, you know, moving more than the one standard deviation. Uh, that the option market price is in going into it. Now, Salesforce going into uh, next week's report, I looked at a strategy that takes advantage of maybe a two or three standard deviation move where you okay. think it's going to move. You just don't have to pick a direction. So I nice. looked at buying an iron condor in here out in the August 30th weekly cycle. So just seven days to expiration. You'll capture next Wednesday's earnings event with this strategy. Where I'm going to buy an out of the money put vertical, the 250 put. I'll buy that, sell the 240 put or 245 put. $5 wide uh, bearish put vertical. And then on the call side, buy the 280 call, sell the 285 call. So buying a $5 out of the money call vertical. So you're creating a long iron condor. You're paying roughly about a 250 debit for it. There's going to be a risk with your potential reward below 245 or above 285 is going to be 250 bucks. So you're risking one to make one uh, on this type of strategy. But if you, if the uh, if Salesforce post earnings moves like a lot of these stocks have two, three standard deviations, uh, I think the option market's pricing in about a plus or minus 18, 17 dollar move right now. All right. Nice. Looking for some action. Yeah. And Salesforce next week. OK, cool. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate the trade.